Hello and welcome to Gas Said Steve's new show, Desert Island Films, which is, of course, a blatant rip-off to JL76 Gaming's Desert Island Games, which is a blatant rip-off to Desert Island Discs on the radio, so I don't feel so bad about it. So basically the format of this, uh, this show is going to be you're marooned on a desert island and you get eight films to pick and two films that you haven't seen and you really should have seen to take with you on this desert island. Now, basically, I've decided that this is going to be a weekly show, so if you are interested in taking part, please do let me know in the comments or on Facebook or however you want, and we will get you on. I'm hoping that it will be a weekly show, and uh, hopefully it will do as well as JL76 Gaming's Desert Island Games. Which brings me on to my guest. Now, who better to have than Mr. JL76 Gaming himself? John. John, are you there? Hello, Gashid. Thanks for having me on. This Hello, is, John. Uh, You're more than welcome, my friend. You're more than welcome. This is an honour. Um, very strange to have an, another corner of the desert island, but very good as well. Yeah, mate. You're always welcome my desert island. You know that. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I, actually, let me rephrase that. It depends on what films you've got. Because you know what games I've got in my little corner of the desert island. And if you've got some cool films, then you are more than welcome to share my TV and my electricity. And hopefully we can get rescued together after watching all the films, after playing all the games. How does that sound? Great. I mean, I've got some good films, but um, it might be controversial um, because obviously I'm picking certain films out of certain series. So some of the choices there might be controversial. But okay. I'm a still I'm a stickler for the rules, John. And uh, basically, if uh, if I if I deem them to be unacceptable, um, I'm afraid they they they're, they're going to stay on the shore. <laughs> they they go go in room 101. <laughs> mm. So uh, you you know the format, John. Basically, you pick eight films, and um, uh, obviously, sort of like you, you you know your top eight films that you can watch over and over again. And you also get to pick, or you also get to bring with you two films that um, you haven't seen yet. And to be fair, you really maybe should have seen. Uh, for me personally, I think films like um, Mary Poppins. I've never seen Mary Poppins. Uh, not not in not in its full at all. So I've seen the I've seen the the, the, the making of Mary Poppins with Tom Hanks, but uh, not the actual film Mary Poppins. So bad example, but I thought I'd give you an example. So uh, you you do understand the rules or yes. the, or the uh, it's, it's not rules, is it called rules? Yeah, yeah, the rules, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah the, rules of, rules. the rules of the desert island. Uh, yes, which um, there were many rules on Lost, and everybody lost. The plot we've lost. So, come on, I'm, I'm jambling shit because this is the first episode and I just want to get on with it. So, God. basically, John, let's um, let's have your first film on your list. Right, now, we were talking about this um, last night, I think it was, when we were talking about this uh, idea, uh, or you were telling me about the idea, I should say, uh, and we both agreed on this film being the best of a series, but... Um, I've changed my mind. Um, I'm actually picking. We're talking about Die Hard here, uh, and I'm picking the first game. Which I, I was talking about the second, uh, the second film last night, but I'm thinking I'm picking the first film, the, we, the Die Hard series. We were indeed talking about the second one. Yeah. Can you tell me why you bring in Die Hard and not Die Hard, Die Hard Two, Die Harder? Because, because Die Hard One is the it's the original one. It's where we're introduced to um, the John McLean and. I think just the the settings better. You know, I like the, the idea that in this big tower block, and and I like the way he's playing with with um, is it Kruger the guy's name? Is it Hans Kruger? Yeah, he's um, yeah. yeah. I like the way, I like the way he's messed about with him. With, you know, messed about with, with his plans. I just like the way it's done. It, it, it is a genius film. I, I, yeah. I remember when it first came out and. Uh, uh, Bruce Willis was obviously uh, up until that point known for uh, moonlighting with Shepard Shepard who uh, was very hot back in the day if, if I if I do say sure. so, so uh, but, I, but I don't think she's into me um, no. obviously that came out at a later later time but uh, yeah she wouldn't be into me and you she'd be more into um, 
the female species, should we say. <laughs> oh, what a waste. Yeah. Oh, oh John. Maybe not a waste of a female in, in, in that kind of in that kind of uh, um, uh, uh, um, well, they, they dig me out of a hole here. Let's talk about Don't dark arts. Let's talk about that. So, in, in in regards to what we were speaking about yesterday, obviously, sort of Die Hard Two for me, um, I think it was possibly the first ever fifteen rated film that I went to see. So, obviously, there was that kind of uh, anticipation about getting into a fifteen film. What am I going to see on screen when all I've seen is you know your PG rated and U U rated films um, in the cinema? Um, and, uh, and for me, I mean, the second one, it was it was set in snow, which is which is pretty cool. Yeah, we were talking about that. Yeah, I like the snow ones as well. Yeah, there there there, there was there was all sort of elements um, in the film. I think my favourite part in Die Hard Two was the Annex Skywalk, where uh, oh, yeah. you, you you know they're having a battle one end of the Skywalk and the other end of the Skywalk. I just thought that 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 battle. That shootout was uh, was brilliant, but uh, yeah, you know, Die Hard. Um, there's lo lots and lots of uh, obviously sort of like spectacular scenes in that. Um, yeah, it was released in uh, 19 1988, believe it or not. <laughs> Good, and, uh, one of us star research then. And a, a great <laughs> cast, a great cast. I mean, obviously Bruce Willis was the main star, but you had uh, Alan Alan Rickman was, uh, was Hans Krueger. Fantastic, think, wasn't he? Brilliant, yeah. brilliant body, absolutely brilliant. And it was uh, produ uh, produced by uh, Joe Silver. Um, but oh, brilliant! I just loved. I just loved some. I, I just loved a bit where he's um, he's on the phone to the cop, or he's on. It was a walkie-talkie phone. I can't remember. But he's on the phone to the cop, yeah. and the, cop, the cop's like he's you know you know the kind of older cop. He's got his donuts and all that. He, he yeah. doesn't believe. He doesn't quite believe that he's genuine. Yeah. And he, he, you know, was it, what is it? He, he throws something out of his chair. A dead boy, yeah, dead boy yeah. in the chair, not the police car. Do you That's believe me now? Yeah, no, it, it is welcome to the party, pal. Yeah, isn't welcome it? to the party, pal. Welcome yeah. to the party, Al. I think his name's Al, but um, yeah, yeah gen genius. I mean, sort of, you know, the 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 interaction between um, between the characters is is fantastic. No more than obviously um, Bruce Willis and Alan, Alan Rickman, where, like you've just said, the actual. Um, you know where where Bruce Willis is spoilers all his plans and basically Alan Rickman's very more hands it's very much like oh well whatever you know he's just one man against um, all of us you know we can take him down and then there's a certain point where it's quite clearly pissing him off and it's like uh, I, yeah no it's a it's wonderfully cast um, a brilliant film set around Christmas time as well which yeah. obviously is you, you know it's kind of a Kind of a go-to movie at Christmas time as well, which is obviously like, like you know quite a good time of year to watch films like that. So, yeah. um, okay, so 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 pick number one is Die Hard. Die Hard, brilliant, yeah. uh, brilliant, excellent. So, uh, film number two, John. Actually, this in in some ways this is quite similar. Um, in in the second, if, if, I believe I know the first one is definitely set at Christmas, but I believe the second one might be set at Christmas. I like these Christmas settings as well. Yeah. So I, I know the first one definitely is, but I'm not sure about this one. Lethal Weapon Two, basically. The uh, Lethal Weapon Two is that? Yeah. Um, that's set around Christmas. I know. I know that the first one definitely is. Uh, this one maybe not, but I know that the first one set set at Christmas, and it's similar. The first one's got a, it's probably more similar to Die Hard. But this one, uh, this is the one, of course. I think this is my best one because the the chemistry between um, Danny Glover and um, Mel Gibson is getting stronger as each film goes on. Yeah. Um, I just love the bit. This is the one, of course, where um, there's a bomb under Danny Glover's yeah. tongue. Hilarious. <laughs> oh, it's just brilliant. <laughs> so it's just the the interaction and the chemistry between those two to uh, actors or, or characters and that seems <laughs> yeah it, it, it is kind of when he sat on the toilet that you know obviously Danny Glover's there and he, he, he really doesn't want it he sort of fuss he, he's quite a bit too blown up rather, rather than uh, anybody see him on the toilet and obviously sort of Mel Gibson or uh, it, it Riggs is it Riggs is Riggs, it Riggs? Riggs and uh, God and and, 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 and uh, Roger, Roger Murta. Murtag. Yeah, Myrtle. 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 Is it Myrtle? Myrtle. Myrtle. I don't know how you say it, but <laughs> I think it's Murtag. But... Yeah. 
it's, it's got a great cast, this as well. I mean, this, I mean, you're talking, you've got, obviously, you know, Mel Gibson and Danny Glover, as we mentioned, but it's got Joe Pesky in it as well. Yeah. Uh, you've got Patsy Kenz in it. Of course, uh, yeah. Some, some great music by Eric Clapton. Yeah. Uh, this, this came out a year after Die Hard, actually. <laughs> Same, so, same sort of era then. So was that kind of the action era where you know Rambo was out and? Yeah, this, see, this is my a lot of my films are from this era because this, this was my favourite era of films. You had yeah. a lot of kind of body cop movies, and that's and I'll, they don't do movies like that no more. And I like that sort of movie. I know yeah. Die Hard, no Die Hard's not a body cop thing, but you know you get my idea. It's like yeah, it, it's kind of kind of action based yeah. around a cop, based around bad guys. Yeah. Which is which is which is, uh, which is a win-win really. So also um, a bit a bit, a bit of comedy thrown in. Never never um, never hurts either. No, no. And then and then this is the thing when when you know when you said about um, all but you know both of these last films have got a great interaction between the characters where you you, you know obviously for different reasons with uh, with with Die Hard um, the whole sort of buddy buddy. Um, you know, one, one, one um, um, Danny Glover is is very much resentful of uh, of Mel Gibson, uh, yeah. but but you know that they would just do anything for each other. Yeah, and uh, I think that just makes you know makes fantastic. And then and, and like you said, that sort of era was based a lot of those films where it was uh, you know two cops partners so on and so forth and. Yeah. And what have you say, which uh, you know, which is a sort of fantastic, um, fantastic sort of story or fantastic um, script writing. So the, the last film, the last set of films I remember being like this, like kind of buddy cops sort of, sort of thing, was a uh, bad boys. Yeah, yeah. There, there, there's there's been a few since. I mean, obviously coming coming into sort of recent days. There's um, there's the one with. Um, uh, Think, 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 think. I can see him. Um, new kids on the block guy. Um, oh, he, he's in Ted. He's in. Um, oh, he's in Ted. Oh, jeez, yeah. What? What? Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg. Yeah, Mark Wahlberg and uh, and and the comedy guy. The um, the uh, uh, the. Oh my lord! I don't think I. I don't know. I think I know the film you're talking about, but I. I, I hope. So, 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 something guys, um, oh. bad guys, top guys, whatever guys. But that, 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 that that's basically a buddy cop film. I'll where need, I'll, need, I'll need to look it up anyway because uh, I do like those kind of films. Yeah, and and um, what's his name? Uh, Mark Wahlberg's a fantastic actor as well. I feel. Yes, um, yeah, yeah. He, he's got really sort of good with age, so definitely beats his uh, new kids on the block sort of era. So, so film number two, John was. Lethal Weapon 2. Lethal Weapon 2. So Lethal Weapon 2 at number 2. And funny enough, before we go on to the next one, that was also a Joel Silver production. Weird. Yes. Mm. yes I, 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 I think there's a theme going on here, John. There's not, because uh, film number 3, uh, we're, moving, we're moving away from cops now, film number 3. Um, film number 3 is, is going to be a Star Wars film. Oh. But which one? Oh, well, okay. Oh. This, it, is going, this is going to be... Uh, Probably an unpopular choice. I know you picked. I know we were talking about this last night, and you were saying uh, Empire Strikes Back. Don't but, say. Uh, I'm, I'm, p- I'm picking uh, the one that uh, that I would have grown up with uh, when I was a little boy, um, and that'd have been Return of the Jedi. Okay, <laughs> so that was Desert Island Films, guys. Thanks for watching, <laughs> and uh, and uh, I probably won't see you soon because John Latimer has just killed my show. John Lathrop is dead to me. <laughs> Listen, it could have been worse. I could have picked Phantom Menace. Oh, my Lord. That, that really would have been the end of the show, mate. That really would. So, <laughs> so why... why? And, and I'm not, I'm not um, going against your pick at all, um, but why Return of the Jedi? Because Return of the Jedi is... I have to say, it's the one, it's, it's the one I grew up... When I was seven years old when this one was out. It's the first one I've seen. It's the one that... I mean, when the Empire Street, I mean, when the first Star Wars was out, I was only two year old. When the next one was out, I don't know what it, what the gap was. I mean, I might have been five, four or five year old or whatever. It's too young to remember it. Seven year old, you're, you're starting to get into it. You're starting to see films for the first time, and it's why the first, it's, it's the first Star Wars film I've seen. Um, I remember there being a big buzz about it at school as well, and I had the sticker album, first sticker album I ever completed. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I remember exactly what Sticker Album that is, yeah. Yeah. And it's just basically the one I got. I'm not saying it's the best the best one. Uh, you know, people will, will not pick that one, but I'll pick it. You know, cause I, I still like it. And it's, it ended this, the story, of course. It, it, it had that magic moment, you know, look, I am your father. I mean, it had some good moments. Yeah. That was, that was in Empire Strikes Back, John. So, so, so he's like, oh, I was <laughs> <laughs> don't make some ass of myself. What's really? <laughs> no, well, the, the, this is the thing for me, like, like we were talking about it yesterday. Oh, um, I know, sorry, sorry, to, no, it's a bit where he, he's already, yeah, sorry, he's already said he's his father, but he removes the mask. That's what I'm thinking about. I do apologize. Oh, yes, <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, when he first sees his face and, he, and he's not, um, he's not Hayden Christian. Uh, yeah, that, that was, that was much better. <laughs> Um, that's better than ruins, but that, that, that's that's a tell for another day. So, um, I, in in regards to, um, I mean, I mean, Star Wars. It was on um, pretty much every Christmas when I was uh, when I was a lad, and, uh, and I remember that being a big issue and like sitting down with the family and um, and watching um, watching Star Wars, you know, with my sisters and mum and dad and everything. So great memories there, but. For for me, Empire Strikes Back was the one, and and I think solely because um, now uh, I, I, I'm not not too sure if people are aware of this, but uh, uh, Dave, Dave, Dave Price was of course the Green Cross Code man, and uh, he was from Bristol, which is um, which is where um, I'm, I'm from Bath originally, and uh, you, you know obviously Bristol's only a couple of miles away, mm-hmm. and uh, one school assembly. Uh, we had a visit from the Green Cross Code Man, wow. and and this must have been going back in 1981-82 uh, when Empire Strikes Back was being filmed in Pinewood, and um, he came to our school assembly, and uh, he came to all our classrooms afterwards, and uh, he was obviously there to say about the Green Cross Code and so on and so forth and so on and so forth, and the only questions we were asking him was about Empire Strikes Back. What happens? Is it true? You know the stories and so on and so. Well, obviously, you sort of read about or hear about it on the grapevine, um, and all we were talking about is Empire Strikes Back. But he he was really really nice, and and all he he was more than happy to sort of ask uh, you know answer our questions um, and just give us some leaflets about how to cross the road at the end of it. So um, yeah, so 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 that's why Empire Strikes Back sort of holds a bit dearer to me. Um, However, you, you you know when they remade them all, yeah, and uh, and they released them back on cinema. Yeah, um, I, I watched all of them back to back. Um, uh, I, ca- I came up to London. I watched them sort of on a big screen. Mm. And uh, my favourite out of the three was Return of the Jedi. There you go. So I do agree with you, and and uh, and Return of the Jedi can stay in your list. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The other thing is you've got to think about it as well is a lot of those guys are the same age that the guys you're going to have in this show, and all the other guys are going to pick Star Wars or Empire Strikes Back, so I'm going to be different. I, I, John, I applaud you on that. Yeah. You'd be different. Yes, I'm certainly different. <laughs> <laughs> so ju- just to confirm, uh, pick number three, John, is... The Turn of the Jedi. Wonderful. Now, moving on, how, how, how can you top the Turn of the Jedi? Moving on to number four. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to get back in the cool book with this one. I think uh, this is one. This is something we can all agree on. Um, one of the best films of all time um, from the from the 1990s. Uh, it's Quentin Tarantino film. Do you know? Can you tell what it is yet? Uh, it's, uh, you 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 are you are to tell us, not me. Pulp, <laughs> Pulp Fiction. There you go. Pulp Fiction. So do, number four. Do, is do, 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 do. Sorry, on. No, ca- no, carry on, please. Carry on. No, I'm, I'm done. No, 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 please come on. <laughs> do, 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 Sorry, uh, I was just... <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so number four is Pulp Fiction. Um, yeah, I, I totally agree. Fantastic film. But why why have you chosen Pulp Fiction for number four? I've chosen Pulp Fiction because the, the script is brilliant. The cast is amazing. Um, the... <sighs> The, the the music is it's one of the best one of my favourite soundtracks from a film. Agreed. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean I've 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 got very few soundtracks CDs in my house, and, but um, that is one of them. I've got that soundtracks that I've got. Um, I just love the. It's not even 
it's obvious songs you would think a lot of them are kind of sixties songs like Dusty Springfield and Chuck Berry and things like that. But it's just the, the songs work really well in the film. Yeah. Yeah, and again, it's Bruce Willis, uh, one of my favourite actors, isn't it? Yeah. And Samuel Jackson, another one of my favourite actors of all time, isn't it? So, um, and I just, I, th- I think Quentin Tarantino is a genius director. He, he, he is. He can turn his hand to pretty much anything, can he? Yeah. Um, you know, he can do the, 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 the normal scenes where you just get the camera work right. Um. The, uh, the the sort of action scenes and and blatant random shit scenes as well, where um, you, if it, if any other director done it, it would probably look terrible uh, because it's Tarantino. Yeah. It just looks arty and fantastic. So yeah, no, fully fully agree. So um, the, dialogue, the dialogue in the film, I just love the dialogue in Quentin Tarantino films. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I've, I've actually watched the film before. I cannot remember what film it is, um, but I've watched it, and every single word for word, I, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, okay, well, every every single word is scripted, and it's scripted for a reason, where it, where it, it, it comes across like they're saying random words that come out of their mouth, but every single word is very cleverly written and yeah. scripted. I think Tarantino is you know, an absolute genius for that. Um, he, he really sets the scene with, obviously, visuals, and obviously, sort of like wording and, uh, and scripts as well. Obviously, he doesn't write the scripts, but I'm sure he has an input on that. So, yeah, and this is at, actually, believe it or not, 20 years old this year. Oh wow! I know it's it's quite. It makes you feel old, doesn't it? So, 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 so that'd be a Blu-ray release then. Yeah, it's, it's out in Blu-ray. I believe already. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. I mean, look at look at the look at the cast. You got John Travolta, Samuel L. Jackson, Uma Thurman, Harvey Keitel. Tim Roth, Amanda Plummer. I mean, these are all big names. Yeah. Uh, you get Bruce Willis, Christopher Walken. Christopher Walken is one of my favourite actors as well. He's always playing the supporting actor. He is. He is. Right. Oh, I just remembered. I've just remembered another film as well that I must have remembered. If I remembered it, I would have put it in. All right, I'll put we, it in. We, we, we will give you some honorary mentions. Yeah, you? I'm going to have to add that to honorable mentions. <laughs> okay, no problem. So, 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 film number four, Quentin Tarantino classic is. Pulp Fiction. Pulp Fiction. What about something, something I should have gone through actually uh, when we go through the films? What was your favourite part of Pulp Fiction? The favourite part, um, I think, uh, I like the I like the chemistry between John Travolta and Samuel Jackson. But I think my favourite part's got to be the bit where Harvey the Harvey Keitel when he's in it and the role <laughs> hiding the body and all that, and I just love the the humour in that. It's like. You know, oh, good, we're all cleaned up. You know, it's yeah. not start sucking each other's dicks just yet. You know, yeah. I just love that. Brilliant. Yeah. And you, you know, again, for word for word, it's like, it's, it's just a genius. Yeah. A genius part. So my, my, my favourite part is probably, um, is it Mia Wallace? Oh, this uh, is Mia Wallace, yeah. Yeah, when, 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 when basically they escape. They escape from... Um, from from the spoiler alert from the from the gimp uh, oh. uh, sort of section and, and he basically walks out and says are we cool and he's uh, he's like you tell anybody about this I'll kill you yeah. but yeah we cool <laughs> and it's like that is that is genius that yeah. is genius so um t- right go go I, I I will go back I wasn't going to but your favorite part of Return of Jedi of what sorry. Uh, Return of Jedi, so I'm going to go back. Oh, right. um, I think it's, it's simply, I think the bit where he removes the mask and, you know, I think it's great kind of touching. You know, after all the fights and all that, he removed the mask and he's all close to him and stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, 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 it is a very sort of emotional time, isn't it, where, mm. you know, this, uh, this, uh, this dark sort of entity, this no feelings, no emotions. Yeah basically take his mask off and he's kind of like a an old dying guy who's yeah. you know been a bit brainwashed or yeah. you know, a bit screwed up in the head and you, you know it's quite yeah yeah I also do like I, I do like a bit when they're, when they're treat, they can through the forest and those bait fins and that's quite cool yeah 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 the speed bike chase yeah yeah, yeah. Um, and uh, Leaf Weapon 2, favourite part is the toilet oh, part? Oh, the toilet part. No, 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 no doubt about it, yeah. It's, that's a classic movie moment. You've got to see it. Yeah. Or, or, or the love scene with uh, Patsy Kenzie. Uh, yeah, that's, that's yeah, not yeah, yeah, that wasn't too bad. <laughs> uh, and Die Hard, the part with uh, with the cop? 
Yeah, welcome to the parties. Yeah, now. yeah, pretty yeah. cool. Yeah, we're good. So, um, sorry, bit of a backward track there, but uh, but I won't make that mistake again. As uh, it's for sure, for sure. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So give me some, give me some break. Come on, give me some slack. God damn it. Um, so pick number four was Pulp Fiction, and pick number five, John. We'll go back to the eighties now. Nineteen eighty-five. I like eighties. Back to the Future. Oh, never seen it. What? <laughs> oh, I, I am kidding. Of course, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'd have ended the call right there. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of debate actually about um, a lot of people like prefer Back to the Future too, but yeah, I think Back to the Future has got to be the original has got to be the best. Um, obviously, uh, Michael J. Fox, God yeah. bless him. Um, yeah. Christopher Lloyd. I just like that uh, kind of. What time is it? Oh no, I'm late for school. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and and that kicks, in. kicks in, and yeah. uh, and away you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's just it's one of the most important films of all time. Groundbreaking. It's just everybody, everybody loves that. I mean, I, I don't think I've met a person that doesn't love that film. No, I, I do You know, I totally agree. And again, it was one of the first films I saw at the cinema. Possibly, um, it was possibly the first film I saw at the cinema. I remember going. I remember trying to get into Top Gun, um, and get and getting turned away because I was a fifteen. Um, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm pretty sure Back to the Future was the first film that I went to see with my sister. So, um, yeah, 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 good time. Shall I, I tell you the first film I've ever seen in the cinema? How old are you, John? <laughs> I'm 38. Okay, so it's the same age. Oh, all right, okay, give us a clue. Right, I went to see it on my 13th birthday, so it's uh, 25 years ago. Uh, it starred Tom Hanks. That would have been big. Quite an early Tom Hanks film. Nope. It, oh, it stars Tom Hanks and a dog. Turner and Hooch. Yeah, that's yeah. the first film I've ever seen in the cinema. Excellent. Oh, do, you, do you know what? I actually really, really like that film. I'd love to, to go back and watch it. I'm pretty sure um, it's a bit of a cheese fest, isn't it? But um, Yeah. It's, yeah. It's one of, one of Tom Hanks' early films, though, before, he, before he was really as big as he is now. Yeah, before he would start in uh, Forrest Gump. And, yeah. Philadelphia and all what, what, what was the um? Because there was a film that came out that same year. Was it Canine? It was Canine with Jim Belushi. Was it Jim Belushi? I think so. Yeah, Canine. Yeah, that, that was pretty good. That's it. Yeah. yeah. That that was an old station. What was who? Chooch was a. Uh, oh, it's like a. a Simbird. Uh, was he? One of those big slavery dogs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Simbird, mm. but uh, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Turn, turn on a hooch. Classic. Yeah. That's. That's not your pick. Your pick is Back to the Future. No, no, just that's what's wrong. No, it, no, it's it, it's, uh, it, it's really interesting you say about um, the Back to the Future and Back to the Future two debate. Now, um, I'm I'm not too sure whether you follow this, but obviously Dave uh, Lawnboy's post has yeah. stated that Back to the Future is the best film ever, um, or one of the best films ever, and um, the Back to the Future two doesn't come close. Now, I know Monkey Spaz 5000, James, uh, agrees with me on this. Back to the Future 2, even though that futuristic part is now probably dated to hell and looks awful. It's next year. It, it's set it, it, it's it. next year, yeah. It's yeah. Next year. I, I think I posted this on our Facebook uh, last year to say, how random is this? Where's, where's my bloody hoverboard? And it was an incorrect picture. Um, it was obviously the dashboard of the DeLorean and, yeah. and so on and so forth. But the, 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 the reason why for me Back to the Future 2, um, now not taking any way, anything away from the soundtrack in Back to the Future, but I think Back to the Future 2, there's a couple of uh, tracks that that are just absolutely blows you away. One's called um, um, Burn the Book, where um, he, he gets the book back and uh, he's putting the book in the bucket and, uh, and he, he, he's lighting the match and it catches the flame and obviously Doc sees his newspaper change. Um, Marty sees, you, you, you know, his uh, his dad's tombstone come back and what have you. That, that part of music, and, and it's all, it's, it's pouring down with rain. Again, we, you know, we talk about snow. Rain is a very atmospheric, uh, atmospheric, atmospheric um, thing to have in films as well. I just love, love that whole sort of like stormy, stormy weather. Yeah. Um, 
and uh, and and there's another track called I'm Back, where uh, he he's basically running around the corner right at the end, just after Doc sends him off to the future. Uh, he runs around the corner, catches up with Doc, like, Doc, Doc, Doc. He's like, what? Oh. <laughs> and then he's uh, and then he's like, but you 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 can't be him. And Marty turns around and says, yeah, I know, Doc. It is me. I'm back. I'm back from the future. And that part of music is yeah. just genius. And the fact that h- how many films can actually go back and view the original film from a different angle? Yeah, it's, it's really well done as well. That, it, it's, it's, but there, there, there's plot holes yeah. all over the place. But it, but if you watch it for what it is, yeah. um, it's fantastic. Not taking anything away whatsoever from Back to the Future. It's a fantastic film. It started it all. Um, I could watch it hour after hour, you know, a couple of times a day maybe. But for me, Back to the Future 2, there's just little things that yeah. attract me more. I'll tell you what, I like that. I don't know if people will say what, but I like them all. I think they're all almost equal, but I, 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 I like them in order to come out, one, two, and then three. But I think yeah. three, I love the music in three because it, there's those easy top finger on. Yeah, yeah. Um, you were a rocker, so I like that. Um, I just, I just like it all. I just, I just, one of those series of films I can just watch over and over and over again. Yeah, mm. yeah. It, uh, the you know again, the, even the third one, it it, it hasn't quite. Well, oh, it, it, it never got slated, did it? It never sort of like it's obviously the weakest of the three. Yeah, yeah as a standalone film, which it won't work as a standalone film, it's still very entertaining and it kind of wraps everything up and pulls everything together. So if that was um, all condensed back into one film. Where you know he starts off in 1985 and ends up in the Wild West and guns like if that was all one film that would be a fantastic film it would have worked because it'd be so long um, and obviously bits would be cut out but uh, as like a standalone film it is the worst of the three but it's extremely good nevertheless and do you know Michael Michael J Fox um, having the Parkinson's Parkinson's disease yeah um, unfortunately that apparently that was caused by you know that scene where he's uh, getting hung. And Back to Future really? 3, that's what uh, apparently caused it, yeah. Oh, wow. Mm. Gosh. Yep, so that's what the love of films, the love of uh, making films is custom, you know, custom yeah. daily for his, yeah. for his health. Yeah. Okay, so, John, pick number five was? Back to the Future. Perfect. And what's your favourite moment in Back to the Future? Uh, I think it's the bit where he's up on stage playing Jordan Good. Classic. Yeah. Classic. You know, again, it's a case of I love that in the second one. Yeah. Where you, you you know, he he he's watching it from a different angle yeah. and he sort of sees it over the, oh, it, oh, it's brilliant. Brilliant. You guys aren't ready for that, but your kids are going to love it. Yeah, classic. <laughs> classic. Mine mine is obviously the, the you know, the skateboard chase. So I think that's yeah. just uh, that's just I so hate, well done. I hate manure. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, genius. So, pick number five, Back to the Future. Moving on, pick number six. Steak out. This makes people. But I'm going back to the whole body cop scenario here. That's Emilio Estevez and uh, um, Dreyfus. This is, this is Dreyfus, yeah. Yeah. I just find this film so funny. I just, I, 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 I can watch it over and over again, and again, and still laughing. Yeah. Richard, Richard Dreyfus is brilliant in this. And again, I've, I've mentioned this word a few times, it's getting a bit old, but chemistry. I think yeah. people underestimate how good chemistry is between the actors in these these films. And um, Richard Dreyfus and uh, Emilia Estevez have got it in bundles. Yeah. Chemistry between them is brilliant. He he was one of my favourite actors as well back in the day, Emilio Estevez. Yeah, um, and, uh, Young Guns fame. Yeah, yeah, young, yeah. Young, young Guns too, if... Yeah. If roles were reversed and I was on uh, Desert Island Films myself, yeah. Young Guns 2 would be very, very close to making that top eight. Love the soundtrack, uh, bon, John yeah. Bon Jovi. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah, the soundtrack. And also the um, instrumental soundtrack as well with that. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm big into soundtrack, I'm big into music, big into soundtracks. Yeah. Hey, hey, but hey, you know, that's that's what we are, isn't it? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, um, Stake Out. Stake, I, no, I, can't, I can't remember too much about Stake Out. I, I remember... Like you said about the chemistry and everything, I remember the second one I had Rosie O'Donnell in. Yeah, I like the second one that's uh, another another stakeout is called. That's, and, okay, that's right, yeah. I, I think her being in it spoiled it a little bit, but um, I just love it. Uh, the, the camaraderie between them, uh, 
it's, I just think it's funny that I think Richard Dreyfus um, shaves off the moustache. Yeah. Or, or is it Emilio Estevez? No, no, it's Emilio Emil Estevez. It's just a uh, constant dig. Yeah, he's like, I wish my moustache. I wish my moustache. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, classic. classic. I loved a bit. I loved a bit. Um, if, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm probably preempting you, uh, your question about what, what's your favourite bit. But I'm just going to tell you just now that my favourite bit from Stakeout is uh, the bit where, um, the bit where you know the, the, the other two cops are on the day shift. He's <laughs> yeah. taking it out, and, they, yeah. and those two guys are on at night. I, um, I loved a bit when uh, Richard Dreyfus is kind of. Befriended the woman and he's kind of sleeping with her and stuff. Yes. And he says, oh shit, they're going to be watching. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you, if, you, if you get a hat, if you get a hat, and the story about his big hat ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, that, that, yeah, that, that is uh, very famous. You, know, you, you know, again, you, you say about buddy cops and you know, sort of like having your partner and the, and the, and the sort of uh, connection to it. too. there's a, there's also um, probably in uh, certainly in Lethal Weapon. And certainly in stakeout, where there's a there's another set, there's another pair of cops, yeah. and it's always like a wind up. They always they don't yeah. you, you know one wants to do a better job, the other ones are you, you know sort of keeners or you know kind of like uh, you know the, the 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 straight down the line, and you, you know mainly the ones that are the actual stars of the show are the jokers and always the the people that that, that, that kind of fuck up or uh, you know sort of like. Do 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 the um do the tricks on each other. So yeah, uh, I love that. I love that bit when they're doing the tricks and then um, the the two other cops have got a dog, and then uh, one of the I don't I can't remember if it's Richard Dreyfus or uh, Emilio Estevez. They put a cat in the car. Yeah. They the, 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 the dog get the back of the car and the dog starts going berserk and they're trying to drive. Right? Yeah, I remember. I remember that. Yeah. The, Classic film. The, the two cops are actually. The, the other two cops, funny enough, uh, for info, are played by um, the guy who was the father in the Wonder Years. Okay. Uh, uh, did you watch the Wonder Years? Uh, do you know what? That's with uh, Fred Savage, isn't it? Yeah, Fred Savage. Well, his dad in it, I think it was Aidan Quinn. Uh, he was in it, and his cop, his buddy cop was uh, Forrest Whitaker. Yeah, oh, yes. Yeah, 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 no, I do remember. I mean, Forrest Whitaker's been around for, for, for years, and he's always had that. Uh, he's never had the star. He's always been the the bridesmaid and never been the bride, has he? Yeah. Uh, in, in, so he's always kind of a bit. Apart, apart from, um, was he? In, he was in Species, wasn't he? Hey, do you know I've watched that? I've watched that film, but I can't really remember. It, 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 it's kind of an alien thing, isn't it? With the tash- yeah, I've seen it in the cinema. Yeah, I remember. Yeah, this is kind no, of so, yeah, yeah, no, I saw that in the cinema as well. Yeah. Random, and it's a film that I would never probably go to the cinema to see, but. Yeah. Um, okay, brilliant. So, uh, you, yeah, your favourite bit. So, number six, John, was? Stick out. Okay, perfect. So, moving on to number seven. Yeah, we're getting there. We are um, getting... You can't have a top eight films kind of thing without, uh, without having Terminator in there. But it's Terminator 2, Judgment Day, I'm thinking. Okay. Yeah. Um, as good as the first film is, uh, I just think that the second one's just so so better done, you know. It's it's the I just like the the idea of uh, the twist. Uh, well, we we all knew the twist early on, uh, but um, you know, we're, we're Arnie came back as a good guy. But we we knew that as early on as um, after the little, little bite chase, you know, to get the cops chasing him. But uh, Linda Hamilton, um, Sarah Connor, he didn't know about um, Arnie becoming the good guy until a bit later on. So. I just loved that whole, that whole the way it was done, you know. Yeah, completely. I think you, you know, I think you're you, you're playing on there um, at the Terminator film. Terminator Two would be hands down for me the better one. I think the Terminator came up with, you know, a fantastic idea, yeah. um, and it was a it was a brilliant film. Uh, but I think Terminator Two really set the standards for um, special effects, storyline, twists in the in the movies. Um, you know, it, it was just a complete package. I think, you you, you know, for all sort of Arnold Schwarzenegger's acting abilities with, or, or lack of acting ability, mm-hmm. that 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 kind of role just is him. He he is the Terminator. That's there, there, there's no one else that can match that. I don't think. And I'm pretty sure I read something. I, I, oh, I, I shouldn't have said this because I can't remember the guy who they were going to cast for the Terminator. 
Um, but it, it, it was it was somebody as, as random as uh, you know Tom Selleck potentially going to be Indiana Jones. You know, it, it was somebody that you think nah, nah, because the Terminator is Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yeah, and the, the other thing you, you see, you're right in saying it's like Arnie and his acting ability or, or lack thereof. Um, I think this role is perfect for him because he didn't actually have to do that much acting, as, you know, dialogue wise. And I, I need to find this out, but I read somewhere once that he only had something like, you know, two or three hundred words, if that, in the whole film. It, it could have been a lot less. I'm just trying to find out. Um, it, 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 said, it said very little words. You didn't see a lot of words in it. It, it was a damn yeah. sight more than uh, than the original Terminator, wasn't it? Yeah. Sarah, Sarah Connor. <laughs> yeah, I think um, it's a great cast and great music as well. The uh, Guns and Roses uh, for the soundtrack. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Robert Patrick was the was the other Terminator. The, yeah. And uh, and and the, and the fantastic yeah. Edward Furlong who went on to be a. Uh, oh no, he didn't. Yeah. <laughs> a, a, a junkie, shall we say? Could, yeah. The, the, only, the only drawback about this film, I think, was was Edward Furlong. I mean, I think, yeah, he does. He's okay, but it, it, for me, he was just too whiny. <laughs> you know. Um. Yeah, I'd, I'd, you you know, looking back on it, you're probably yeah. right. Um, at, at the time, I mean, I, you, you you know, he did work for me. It it, yeah. it wasn't quite a um. Yeah. You know, Phantom Menace, where that 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 child, um, who 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 played uh, who played Anakin, just ru- ruined it for me. It was yeah, c- completely spoiled. I think Edward Furlong. I think you know at the time it worked. Um, I think looking back on it now to what he's become, yeah, kind of like, well, why why did he get given that role? Yeah. You know, when there's when there's people like uh, Shia LaBeouf, I, no. <laughs> I'm I'm picking at it though. I mean, it is to put, actually it's it's faultless, but I'm 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 trying to find holes in it, and that's not really that big a hole that you can pick. Up. No, no do, you, do, you, do you know what? I I think a couple of years ago I tried to do that, and I, and I watched it, and it was like, okay, I'm 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 going to watch this, and think right, it's dated. Um, you know, I'm going to pick holes in it. The special effects aren't that good, so on and so forth. And I was completely and utterly pleasurably pleased when I watched it and it hadn't dated and the special effects were still fantastic and the story was still fantastic the action scenes are amazing um, it, it, it is a complete film, it is the complete film right, I found out, it really is I found out a bit of information, this is funny actually um, the person that the studio had suggested to play um, the Terminator was O.J. Simpson that, right, that's it, O.J. Yeah. Simpson O.J. Simpson as the Terminator. I I I put I put that. I put thing 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 is if O.J. Simpson had been the Terminator, do you think what happened would have happened? Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, every every action has a reaction. A, yeah, a reaction. So I think I've, we're going to get deep now. I'm not. I don't want to get too much into it because you want to cut, you know, keep us um, short as possible. But I think I think there's. For every um, for every decision that's made, I think there's an alternative reality. Yeah, yeah, deep, oh, deep. Yeah, very, very deep. Yeah, very, very deep. Now join us next week for Desert Island Ultimate Reality. Yeah, which is a new show which is being hosted by us both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. So, uh, your favourite part in Terminator? We actually, John, we'll speak about that afterwards. That's quite an interesting topic. So, uh, yeah. So number seven, oh sorry, your favourite part of your part from Terminator was... Um, I think, oh, there's, there's so many good parts, I think it'd have to be the, I like the, the, the chase, when you know, when, they, when, they, when they're getting chased down by the truck, when he's on the, the bridge and, yeah. and he grabs him off the bike and, you know, eventually they, they're they driving on and, they, and John Connor's going, no, whoa, whoa, time out, time out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Here. You know, I like that's the chase is classic. It's classic cinema. Yeah, I I, I would have to uh, have to agree with you on that. Yeah. However, I think closely followed by the uh, by the shootout in the building, where he where he doesn't injure anybody else, and and, and he you know kneecaps them all, and uh, you you know I just think that scene's visually is amazing, where yeah. you know he's standing up on the eighth floor of that building, 
and you just see the carnage behind him or, or, or down below. I just think that's that's wonderfully done, really yeah. well. Agreed. Yeah, that is a that's a good moment. Yeah. So, John, just to confirm, pick number seven is Terminator Two: Judgment Day. Wonderful. Now, number eight. Now, this is this is our final pick before mm. we move on to the films that you really should have seen by now, <laughs> uh, which you're going to take to the desert island with you. And number eight is the commitments. Oh. Yeah, this might be not it might not be to be, be to everybody's taste, but um, I just think it's I love music. I'm a music, big music fan, and the the fact that this film's but based around music, uh, it just does it for me. Okay, I I do do, do do you know what? I have seen the commitments. Yeah, and I do remember it being fairly good, um, but not my cup of tea. So well, I, exactly, that's what I say. it's not to, it's not everybody's taste. No, I I, I will leave. Uh, the reasons why um, it's your favourite, or in the, in you know your top eight, um, solely over to you, and I won't say a word. This is the one uh, we were talking before the show, and I said I'm going to take out one of the films. Um, no, no, what have you taken out? Uh, I've taken out the Hanover. Um, and guys, this is in Desert Island Films. Thanks for watching <laughs> again. Um, okay, right, okay, you, you have to justify this action. Right, well, I, I, I'm going to justify it. Okay, you justify it, John. I'm going to justify it. Now, you, you I, was, justify I, was, it. I was thinking about this, and, I, and I've mentioned this earlier on as well, like, um, a lot of these films are based on replay value, I, I can watch it over and over again, and when I look back at films that I've watched, I, I've probably watched The Commitments as much as any other film that I've watched, so for something that I've watched so many times it would be crazy to leave it off the list I've got to have it in there yeah that, yeah, I, you know The Hangover is it's very funny but it's pretty much one time Charlie isn't it um, or, or I've watched twice at the most but the Hangover but I would watch the commitments over and over again yeah and I have done um, what's your, what's your favourite song in the commitments ooh um, Mustang Sally is one that I've done at karaoke many times, but I wouldn't say it's my favourite. Um, I think it's probably you are probably got this is going to be lose my cool, you know, because I'm a heavy metal rock fan. But yeah. I, like, I like try a little tenderness. It's a lovely song. <laughs> you're going to you're, you're going to ask me to sing it. I'm not going to I'm not going to sing it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, but I'll tell you what you are going to sing. Yeah, you're going to sing Mustang Sally. And... Yeah, yeah, no, I'm not going to sing that. For, 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 for 10 seconds, it, please, John, it's my first show. Please. Oh, no, 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 I can't right. do it. I'll, I'll, I'll give you the opening line, and that's it. Yeah, go on. <clears throat> Mustang Sally. That's it. I'm, I'm just opening to hey, us. Hey, you know, well, that was good. I, yeah. I enjoyed that. Can you give me another line? <laughs> no, because I forget the words. <laughs> <laughs> but you've done it at karaoke. Come on. Because the words come up on the screen. Mustang Sally, you gotta ride Mustang down. Mustang Sally, no baby. Sally, no baby. I saw it at uh, karaoke in Holiday in Spain. I had uh, three female backing singers. It was really good. Oh, it was all. Uh, yeah. Lovely. But yeah, it's, just, it's, it's good in fact as well. I, I think it's my first British film on my list. As yes. Well. So you've, yeah. got, you've got a British form in there. Um, yeah. The guy who's the guy that's the sinner in it, um, Andrew Strong is the, is the name of the sinner, but he's, he plays. Um, oh God, what's the name of that? <laughs> the, the the character, the the character's um, Deco. He's the lead sinner. Um, he's got just got an absolutely fantastic voice. Is, um, is is he the one that turns up for the? No, I I, I have watched that. I do remember the slight bits about. <laughs> He, he he turns up for the auditions and he's all sort of like um, shirt hanging out, greased back hair, slightly yeah. big, and, and and he stands up and he's like he's amazing. Yeah, it basically, I mean, I found out at, uh, later on, like years later after watching it many times, that that guy was only sixteen year old when he did that. Sixteen. Yeah, he's only the same age as us now. Oh my lord. I know. Had to have a voice like that at sixteen. That's phenomenal, isn't it? Yeah. That's a, that's X Factor material. Yeah. 
That's uh, that's kind of like one of those moments where the Susan Boyle moment when he turns up and it's like, hee hee hee, this is going to be so bad, and he the, opens his mouth and it's it's uh, majestic. The bit where they get spotted in the film is uh, that they're at a wedding at the start of it, and uh, this, this kind of house band on, they're sending needles and pins, you know, the sixties classic. Then they go on a break and they the the deco character's pissed out his box and he grabs the microphone and he starts sending the proclaimers. And uh, somebody's saying, look at that Egypt. And the, the guy it turns out to be the manager of the band says, hey, that Egypt can sing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah. before we move on, John, to uh, to our uh, last two, yeah. um, the commitments. What's your favourite part of the commitments? Now, I, I, again, I can't comment. Uh, <laughs> but what's your favourite part of the commitments? Now, I don't know if this is my favourite part, but I'm going to tell you this part anyway because it's actually something that in it I found really, really funny. And it's a scene where um, the manager is... Uh, one, one of the girls in the band's um, not turned up for rehearsals, so the manager goes to track her down in her flat and he's standing at the lift, waiting for the lift to go up to the flat. And there's this boy there standing with a horse. And the guy's like, uh, you're not taking that horse in the lift. And the boy goes, I need to the stairs with knacker him. <laughs> <laughs> I, 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 I do remember that bit actually. Mm-hmm. I remember that bit as well. So it's obviously obviously le- le- left some kind of impression on me. So yeah, brilliant. So John, that's that's our top eight films that um, that obviously you're taking to the desert island with you. Yeah. Um, so number one, obviously not in no particular order in regards to preference. Number one was Die Hard. Yeah. Um, number two was Lethal Weapon Two. Mm-hmm. Number three, controversial, was mm-hmm. Return of the Jedi. Yeah. Number four was Pulp Fiction, fantastic film. Number five was Back to the Future, again, classic film. Number six was Stake Out, which is probably um, uh, 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 an unusual film to have in there, because obviously when, when, when you talk about your top, top ten films or top fifty films, usually they're all blockbusters. and you know, They don't all have to be blockbusters. It's about what exactly. kind of my memories as a film watcher. Yeah. Quite right, yeah. and and talk about non blockbusters Terminator Two, <laughs> <laughs> um, and and then the only British film that you've got in there that was the Commitments. Yeah. So John, you 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 know the format, mate. Um, we we've been through this, and again, you know, people watching this for the first time, um, you pick eight eight films that you've seen, and uh, you you know you, you sit on your desert island with your fifty five inch plasma screen, LCD <laughs> curved, four uh, K TV in three D. And, uh, and and you watch Stakeout and the commitments and Terminator 2, but but there's something niggling you and something that you know you you you've been disappointed for and you've been edging to watch for years and years and years, just never got around to it. You get to bring two films that you've never seen, but you've always wanted to. John, what's number one? Do you know um, if I had a bit more time to think about it, I probably would think of something obvious that I've always wanted to see. But I'm actually picking two films that people have told me recently that I need to see. Um, do, do, do you so want to one of those, John? I think you told me <laughs> off. You told me off about it the other day, didn't you? Uh, um, damn right, too. <laughs> um, Escape from New York. Escape from New York with um, with Kurt Russell, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was talking to Dean Thompson about this um, on my latest Desert Island Games because... I was asking about um, his avatar on YouTube, and I thought it was the guy from The Walking Dead <laughs> because he had the eye patch. He said, "No, that's uh, that's Kurt Russell and Escape from New York." I went, "Yeah, I've not seen it." And then you listened to this, and you started badgering me on <laughs> PMs, and, and yeah. rightly, rightly yeah. so. And, and I'm not badgering you because you haven't seen it, which I totally understand. But to say it's that guy from The Walking Dead, yeah, scandalous, John. Scandalous. It did look a bit like him. No, it didn't. No. Anyway, you need to tell me a bit Escape from New York because I've not, it's obviously. Uh, I've not... Well, look, I'm not going to ruin it. All I'm going to do is tell you my favourite moments. Go on. <laughs> no, I'm no, I'm not. You, you, you know, again, it's it's one of those. Um, if you've ever seen, um, uh, like Judge Dredd, where it's basically one man against thousands or hundreds and so on and so forth. It's very atmospheric. It's very 80s. 80s cheese action. Um, great one-liners. Kurt Russell is um, at his best. 
Um, and it, it, you know, it, it's just a fantastic watch, mate. And uh, I, I, as far as I know, it's not a very long film. Um, so, so, so you, you know, again, it's a film that um, it, it's a, it's a pick up and play film as well. So it, it's not too deep. It's it, it's it is what it is. It's an eighties action cheese fest. Now, if that doesn't make you want to run out and get it, like, that, um, yeah. I don't know. I don't know how I've missed it. I honestly don't know how I've missed it because that's I like films as well where you don't need to think that much as well. So yeah. it seems perfect. I love, I love eating action films. Good. Um, Good. I, and actually, I love Kurt Russell. I think I, I like a lot of Kurt Russell's films. What's the, What's your favourite Kurt Russell film? You're going to laugh. <laughs> no, no, no. I like, I like cheesy films. Okay. There's one, <laughs> there's one called I think it's called. Um, I'm probably going to make an ass myself and get get a completely wrong film or a completely wrong actor here, but I believe he was in uh, Fifty Thousand Miles from Graceland. Have you seen that film? Uh, it's obviously an Elvis Presley film. Yeah, it's basically the bank robbers. I uh, haven't seen it. I uh, no. what's, your, what's your favourite Kurt Russell film? Uh, my oh, my favourite one is Backdraft. Yeah. So solely because at the time it came out, uh, both me and my friend Stuart. Um, we we you know we both really really want to be firefighters. Now it turned out that um, there, there there's slight issues to reasons why uh, both of us can't be firefighters and sort of like health and so and so issues. But that was at the time for a, you know a couple of years. It was a case of that is what we wanted to do, and that was our sole sort of purpose when you know when we were sort of like sixteen seventeen. Um, that was what we were going to do. That was what we were going to be. And then sort of circumstances happened, and uh, and and that kind of, kind of taken away from us. I think during those during those couple of years, that was it. And the fact that we went to the cinema to watch it, and um, <laughs> my my my, my <laughs> he's going to hate me for this, but he doesn't watch it. Uh, my friend Stuart blew off, <laughs> and uh, basically we got told off by the guy behind us. And uh, that 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 month, that same month, I started a job in a in a in a coffee shop in Bath, and uh, the guy who sat behind us was uh, the head chef. Oh, <laughs> so uh, yeah, that, that that was kind of tricky. But I, he, he didn't remember us. It was just the hysteria, the hilarity of sort of that happening, yeah. and then me taking the job and me being the guy that, and he was probably like, guys, if you don't watch the film. You know, and it was like obviously with you, you, you know, now being sort of a, a, an older person, you can relate to it. It's like there's some kids in the front laughing and snickering, and, and one of them's guffed, and uh, and it's kind of like you know, you little shits, get out. So uh, I can kind of relate to it, but yeah, yeah, that, that, that's not the reason why I like the film so much. But um, <laughs> the yeah. the memory. It, yeah, exactly. So 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 you kind of relate back to uh, backdraft to a good time in your life. Yeah, where it's sort of like you, you know, had a good laugh and so on. So I think you, you, you know, with backdraft is it, it, again, it's the elements, uh, the rain, the snow, the fire, um, you, you, you are like uncontrolled elements. I think that's what that's what I like. And fire is, despite what anybody thinks, um, is quite cool to look at. Um, you know, bonfires and so on. So obviously, if it if it catches your house alight, then it's not that much fun. But um, yeah. So yeah, moving on to your um, your last pick, which is uh, again a film that you would take and you haven't seen yet. And your last pick is Scarface. Scarface, Al Pacino's finest. Yeah, this just came from. Um, I mean, obviously, it's a very famous film that that I should have watched anyway. But as by the by, this sudden need to watch it all of a sudden just came from. Uh, a couple of my guests recently on Desert Island Games have been talking about Vice City, you know, Grand Theft Auto Vice City, yeah. and they basically said, that is Scarface. And I went, like, really? I've not seen it. And, and, and they went, oh, you've got to see this film. I mean, yeah, I've always meant to to look it up, but I've just never had the opportunity. But now that people have told me it's like, excuse me, uh, Vice City, then uh, yeah, I've got to watch it. Al, Al Kino is fantastic in it, and yeah, it is very... Very vice it yet, uh, you know. It's very um, um, there, there. There's a lot of elements in Vice City, or a lot of elements in Scarface, 
yeah. that they've put in Vice City. I mean, the, the, you know, there's bits with chainsaws and there's bit with sort of like uh, massive mansions and gun shootouts and sort of like wobblies and, and blatant nasty murders and nightclubs and it's all set around a, an 80s kind of, I, I, I think it was set in, is it set in Colombia or Cuba or, or somewhere, you know, somewhere again that, that this is all life and um, it is an amazing film, John. It is, you know, like I said, Al Pacino is fantastic. Um, Michelle Pfeiffer is very good in it as well. Um, and uh, yeah, mm, and uh, yeah, it is, it, it, it is a must. It is a must to watch, definitely. Funny enough, I was in CEX earlier on today, and if I had the money, I'd have waited for it. I seen it in the window of CEX, a special edition. There was like a big fancy box with Scarface. Yeah. Some fancy box set, or not box set, but it's you know, a nice box, a box to set of this it, home. And it's is that a cigar? <laughs> Sorry, is that a cigar box set? Um, it may have been, um, it may well have been, uh, maybe that, maybe it was like that inside, but I've only seen the outside of the box. But it's something like a twenty-six pound. It was so. Wow. Oh, no, I don't, I don't have twenty-six pound on me right now. Well, I do, but you know, I can't really justify. That purchase, you know. Yeah. So. yeah, no. Well, this is a film. I mean, you know, a film like Scarface is quite, um, even though it's not so much on telly these days or Sky or satellite, it, it, it does pop up, um, you know, in, in places like CEX for next to nothing. So it's definitely worth, um, yeah. definitely worth picking up. If not downloading from some legal sites, where you course, uh, yeah. download it from wherever you want. Yeah. Um, so there you go. Your um, your your top picks for new films are Escape from New York and Scarface. Perfect. Two wonderful films. Well, John, look, we're wrapping up there because obviously it, it's gone on and uh, we've had fun and we've had a bit of a, a bit of a hiccup and we hopefully have solved that hiccup, um, which viewers do not know anything about. So it's going to be seamless and smooth. Um, however, it wasn't. And um, we're crying about it now. Yeah. Can, I quickly no, through, can I quickly run through my honourable mentions? I'll just run through them and no talk. Oh, yes, yes, yes honourable yeah, mentions. Yeah. I'll save the best for last. <laughs> Wayne's World, Austin Powers, Reservoir Dogs. I thought that was too similar to Pulp Fiction to pick. Uh, Cow Bill, Ghostbusters, The Hanover, Train Spotting. It should have been my UK phone, but never mind. True Romance, which has been a mention since for Walking Hill on it, it reminded me of that. Um, Gremlins, which is what we've had tonight. Yeah. And um, of course, how can I not pick this with the referendum coming up? I've seen this in cinema. Braveheart. Uh, yeah. You can take my children, you can take my legs, you can take my arms, but you will never take my. Uh, freedom! Take it out. Well, that's that's very that's a very apt um, moment to leave it there. Um, obviously, sort of this come this time next week, um, I may not be allowed to talk to you because you may be we, we may be at war um, or <laughs> something along those lines. Um, yeah. What well, just very very briefly, and I, I don't talk about politics, but what do you think? What or what would you vote? I've been saying no all on, mainly because. Um, well, two reasons. For, well, I know you said briefly. Um, mainly because uh, my job depends on it. That's a pretty good reason. Um, okay. Because I work um, for the government, British yep. government. Uh, second uh, reason being that I like all my English friends and I like being part of the union. However, I have seen some very convincing arguments for you for yes recently, and it's starting to make my head spin. So I'm confused. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm excited. You- do you, do, you, do you know what? I think if, if I was in that sort of situation and, you, you know, change is good, um, I, I would probably vote for yes, you know, to, to, to come out of uh, of England or Britain or, or the, you know, standalone sort of like Scotland, uh, just because I think change is, it, it is something to be embraced and something uh, quite exciting. However... I do generally believe that would be a mistake. There's too much uncertainty about things. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, at the moment, there's not enough proof of how things are going to go, and that is uncertainty that's putting me off. Yeah. 
Let me ask you, just before we go, let me ask you the question. Let's say the shoe is on every foot. England are voting for independence. Would you say yes or no? England, don't, not Scotland. Uh, in, in independence from what? From, in, no. Independence from, me, from like from Scotland and Wales. You could be your yeah, own. Therefore, Scotland, Wales, Northern Ireland would, would be the union and England would be separate. Would you vote for that, yes or no? No, I don't think so. I don't think so. I think we are we are as one. Um, there's elements of of uh, positivities out of all sort of like countries or all you know sections of Britain. But I, just, I you know I just think we 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 are as one. We stand together and um, we move on together. That's that's yeah. why I believe. Um, um, yeah, I, I think there's. I think it would cause friction between Scottish and English people. Uh, yeah, yeah, it would. Have, so I mean, there's there's already elements of that, and uh, and and why I haven't got a clue. But obviously, um, it sort of boils down to banter becoming yeah. um, aggression, becoming slight racism. Um, you know, I think it's, it, it always starts with an innocent. <laughs> you're Scottish, and then uh, it sort of boils down to like, well, you're English, your football team shit. Um, and then it's like, well, hold on a second, your country's shit, or you know, you've got too many mountains, or or, or whatever, and then it just turns into nastiness. So, um, and I think Scotland's a beautiful country as well. Yeah, England's all right. Scotland's all right. <laughs> and, on, and on that note, thanks for watching Desert Island Politics. And uh, <laughs> so, John, you've been a fantastic guest, and um, I, I, I thank you sincerely. Uh, for obviously letting me roll with the whole Desert Island sign um, sort of um, name of it. Um, yeah, so... I've, I've really enjoyed it. Do you know, I think it is... I'm so glad that um, that, that you're doing it and, and I've, been, I've embraced it as well because I've really enjoyed doing it. It's definitely worth it. Yeah, thank you very much, John. And guys, thank you very much for watching. And I will hopefully see you next week with a new guest. And again, just before we go, just like to thank John for appearing on the first episode of Desert Island 